Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. And uh, it's it's the big show, the big day. It's kind of weird doing this, like, back in the booth again, you know, after we just got back from GRL. I totally have the wrong fucking logo up there, too. Look at that. Let's see. Let's see if my button works here. Let's see if the button works. Give me one second here. I'm going to see if this thing works. No, but now it does. Look at that shit. Ha, I got it. I'm going to have to do the same damn thing again. I got the ticker. Don't worry. I haven't updated the ticker. <laughs> I don't even know what it says. Let's see. I haven't updated the ticker in quite a while because I completely forgot about it. Let's see what it says. It's going to have a joke in it, just like normal. It says, uh, live talk to the beards coming from GRL. We already did that. It says Gary Furlong's coming on. He's here. <laughs> and then it says the 25th is to be announced. I forget who Trace got for that, but bah. It's the ticker that's not accurate. Anyways, <clears throat> um, everything feels discombobulated right now because uh, this is really my first true day back to work. I worked a little bit yesterday with uh, Anna Bird, and then we uh, we uh, just started back in again today. We're actually working on a Roe Horvat story. I've not worked for Roe in quite a while. We're doing a book called The Layover. we got about an hour done on that, and... Dude, it was like 45 minutes of finished audio right before we started. I barely got over and grabbed Gary on the on the vMix call here to get us on, on the air. But anyways, we got that. Um, Friday. I don't have any gig Friday, so I'm planning on doing some sort of live reading on Friday. I don't know what yet, but we shall see whatever the hell we're working on. And Sunday. Um, I totally forgot that we were supposed to do a morning coffee video this last Sunday because I'm not used to doing those. But we'll definitely be around on Sunday again and doing that, too. So, um, the guest that we have on today, um, I've had this guy on once before. Um, he's fantastic. Everybody knows who he is. Uh, without any more from me, even though I'll still be here, I give you Mr. Gary Furlong. Ta-da! Hello! There you, you are. You fucks! Is that the correct way? <laughs> that, is that, that how is. we... Yeah, is they actually hello? like to be called fucks. They enjoy it around here. <laughs> now, check this out. I've got this cool thing I'm going to try out. All right? Let's see if it works. Do it. Check out the little middle screen there. Look I've actually that. got comments on the screen. It's freaking slick. I love it. It's um, beautiful. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, man. Uh, great to have you back. How you been? What's what are you up to lately? It's it's lovely to be back. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I got a bicycle. That is a non-narration thing that I have bicycle. done. Yeah, and I do. Don't that's all I listen to when I'm gone. Like I want to ride my bicycle. <laughs> yeah, I bet you, you got. Do you get the little bell? Do you do the dinging thing? Do you do the, the I have. I thing? have a bell. I have yeah. a little bell and it has a compass on it. So I always know where I'm going. <laughs> well, I mean, the fact is that you you obviously you 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 need to be healthy and it's good. Did you get yeah. a bicycle? I want you to tell the truth though. How many DUIs did you get and when do you get your driver's license? <laughs> Maybe I never had one in the first place. No, no. <laughs> Actually, you say DUIs, which I've never gotten. And also until I think two weeks ago. Never had I had a run in with the law on the road, except what? we were driving home from Colorado. And I made the mistake of going five miles an hour over, which is what you do in Texas. We were in Colorado and we Ooh. went past a state trooper and then the fucking lights come on and he pulls me over. And I was like, I'm pulling you over today for your speed, sir. And I'm like, fuck. I got away with a warning. It's okay. But I now feel like a criminal and slash a bad boy for going five to nine over. Motherfucker. So, by the way, uh, Kashana Shaw just asked, uh, <clears throat> I'm new to Gary, but is that uh, an accent that I hear? This is a common conversation that we have with Gary. What? And yeah, exactly. Gary's actually from an Louisiana. And... I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> Born and bred. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the cheese state. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, no, they make Cajun, so, they make nice food. Yeah, you, so for so people who have not seen you before, please please explain where you're actually yes. from. It's not from Louisiana, and tell so, the whole story here. I am from Ireland. Um, a quick recap. Um, I used to teach English in Japan, which is where I met my wife, who is from Texas. And that is why I'm currently in Texas, because I'm married to her and we live here. And, but that's why I sound funny, is because I'm originally from Ireland. Well, and how else the hell are you? I mean, it's not really that hard to be able to stay in America. I don't even think you need a green card anymore or anything. You didn't have to marry that chick, you know? It's America. We just let you <laughs> into the borders. It's fucking fine. Um, you're in Texas, so you can just walk right across that southern border. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, like, 
it has taken, I think, five years from when I applied to get the green card. It's taken so long for me to get my green card that I am now eligible to apply for citizenship, which takes five years. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> like it, it's it's really hard to do it the legal way, isn't it? <laughs> it's very difficult to do it the legal way. <laughs> yeah. Um so I don't understand how anyone does it the illegal way. It seems that's even more difficult. So did they care about the when you got pulled over, did they care about all the marijuana that you had in your car? It's Texas. I don't think they care. I had to give them a large portion of it. Yeah, well, that's a, but then that's no. <laughs> not a big deal. Then, um, I, I, you, you uh, it's it's great to have you on again. Um, the the Texas saying, I've been really wanting to visit there. Um, there's, I realize it, it, it's hot as shit. I actually, one of my friends, Drew Gibson, he lives in Texas, and a couple other people. Uh, uh, that that lesbian chick from Texas, what's her name? Kelly Fox. Um, <clears throat> she's a, oh. a, a a friend of mine. She's a, they live in Texas too. I I love the state and I love it. There's a lot of good people there, but it's so big, like. Oh. I don't yeah. know where it's to even gigantic. go. Yeah, it's like a huge fucking cock. So there, uh, I I have a friend that lives in Austin. Um, where, where do you live in Texas? You don't. Need, I live I don't in Denton. Interest. So I live real far north, probably okay. as north as you can go before you go to Oklahoma. So it's actually a little cooler there. It's not as hot it's, as. Yeah, it's starting to cool down now. Like I have my booth door is closed, which I wasn't going to do, but I'm actually able to survive surprisingly, <laughs> which wasn't just, true. Like a few weeks ago. No, I just turned my glory holes off. Um, two days ago. I was very excited about that. Um, uh, we're, we're down to now I've got the swamp booth going on right now. I've been sitting here working solid now for, I don't know, an hour and 45 minutes, somewhere in there. We're up to 78 degrees in here, which is a little on the hot side for my, for my blood, but um, it sounds so much better when I turn the air off. It just, it sounds oh, better. Yeah. You know? uh, I have a, I have a glory hole up here mm. that I don't, I can't use cause it's too loud. So all I do mm. is I open the door and I blast it with a portable air conditioner and then hope it lasts while it, like in, for 10 minutes and then I'll be like, I'll record for an hour. I hope I don't <laughs> melt and die. Yeah. I, I was blowing it out earlier here. So I'm going <clears> to, it, it's just. I, I think the glory holes in mind, they add in between six and eight dB of noise. That, that's not super loud, but it's it's just enough where, you know, I go from like a minus 74, minus 75 noise floor up to where I have to start removing it with, with isotope. And that kind of pisses yeah. me off a little bit. It is what it is. It's so. just that, that in the background, it's like, go away. Yeah, I know. I I can remove it. It's just, it sounds so much better. When I worked yesterday, yesterday was my first time without the glory holes on in six months, somewhere in there. And uh, several people in the crowd uh, kept saying, you sound really good today. And in my mind, <laughs> it wasn't me. It was it was that I turned the air conditioning off, you know? Um, what have you been working on, dude? I haven't, I've, I've been off of Facebook except for posting these videos. So I don't keep track of anybody oh, same. right now. I, I have not been on Facebook for the longest time. Um, I am working on, I just finished a book called Level Up 3 by Simon Archer. And I'm now working on a, a horror book, a scary book, a spooky book oh, called A Place So Wicked by Patrick. And I think his name is pronounced Royman or E-U-M-A-N, but it could be Patrick Ruman. I've never actually met him, but uh, it's a yeah. great book. Um, it's It's... I don't do well with horror films. They scare me too much. And I'm in the booth just kind of like getting a bit spooked today, which I do like. I mean, oh, the book is doing its job then. I'm very pleased about that. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, never, I've never done any, and it will sound funny when I say it this way, I've never done any straight horror. Um, and it's <laughs> probably precisely the definition of what I have done. I've, I've done a couple of gay romance uh, horror books, and I really enjoy them. I really enjoy building the... Do you, do you change what you do to match the genre at all? Or are you slowing oh, yeah, down and yeah. getting a little creepier? And... Oh, yeah. This is like from the, the book I just did was like a superhero fantasy book. It sounds, it'll sound nothing like this book. Mm -hmm. It's completely I mean, that's the, that's the goal anyway. That's that's the, the hope. People are, are actually saying, I love listening to your YA book, Scary. That's what Susan just said. Oh, there. thank you very much. I can imagine you in that genre too. I can imagine that. I think you would do fantastic. It was one of one of the not very first books I did, but first I like big successes for me anyway. Was was a book, a trilogy called Timekeeper by Tara Sim, mm. and it's just a really well written YA LGBT book that I was just like, ah, oh, this is so good. The premise is so good, like steampunky, magic y. Ah, oh, it was great. So it's a great trilogy. If you don't listen to it, you should read it and read Tara Sim's books. 
Nice. Oh, the one yeah. with Joel, the the fucking Yarrick and Bones. Sorry for cursing. <laughs> yeah, we don't fucking curse on this show. What are you doing? <laughs> <clears throat> I think that's the uh, one uh, Susan's talking about, Yarrick and Bones, where I played a skeletal Yarrick come back to life in the modern era. That's fantastic. He just wants to find a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still... <laughs> I still struggle with those. It was it a, I'm assuming it was a dual narration. Um, I, I still oh, it was, struggle it was with multiples. Those. Oh, so it's a oh, multicast yeah? kind of thing. Yeah. It was I, like, it's go ahead, like a go duet, ahead. I think between, I don't know how many of us, it was quite a few and Joel narrated it. Okay. So he was the narrator and I played Yorick. So I was just like, uh, <laughs> like this high pitched, like, oh no, my name is Yorick. Oh. <laughs> But as a skeleton. The, the duels are, I've done a lot of them and they're a necessary part of our mm. career. Most, most of us end oh, up yeah. doing these. Um, but it, it, it just depends on the other narrator's workflow, what they're accustomed to, what they're not, and, and when you can squeeze a project in. Kurt and I were talking oh, yeah. about this recently. It's, uh, it, it's, I, I still, no matter, it, it could be the best experience in the world. And I still feel so disconnected from the book because I'm not reading the, in, the entire thing. I'm, you know, yeah. it's a weird process. Um, how do you, do you, do you do those? And if so, how do you handle that? Oh yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's similar. It, it's kind of like at the very least, I'll ask the other narrator for samples of characters we share. So just mm -hmm. like, how do you do the voice? How are you doing it? So I don't go like, even if it's like, well, they're a British accent. Okay, fine. But like, are you doing them really deep voiced? Are they gravelly or are they like really high? Like, how do they sound? And again, yeah, it you there is big chunks of stuff missing because uh -huh. you just like you do your chapters, and yeah, if if you have the time and can be diligent that way, like sometimes I have a researcher who who'll read the entire book, uh -huh. and I'll read I'll read synopsises of what happened. But there's times you don't have that you don't have that fucking luxury to do that. So yeah, you I don't know read read the first few lines and be like. Yeah, this is a tense chapter. Okay, we're going to be tense <laughs> with this one. Something bad happened. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm sure I'll find out. You run into the same things I do. My pre-readers will do oh, the yeah. same thing, and they'll give me a little Cliff's Notes version of the, of each chapter mm -hmm. so I can see what happened. But I didn't live through that, you know? So I feel it, it's like I'm... It must be what stage actors feel like on a regular basis, where they'll come in for like two scenes of a movie and they don't have all the fucking background and shit and they just have to be they dropped in and this is your scene and you're doing it. I can sound convincing. I'm a fucking actor. I can sound like I know what happened, what I'm yeah. doing. But in my mind, I'm, the entire time, I'm like, what's going on here? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I recently did a like an audio drama, but it was a live directed one. So there were, and it was, I think they scheduled it like you would a film shoot. So it was like, okay, these actors are available on this day. So we're going to do all those scenes on that day. There's no shooting in order. It was just like, who can we get? Okay. All their scenes. Boom, 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 boom. Got to get them out. And wow. there were times I was just like, it's, it's a cool story and a cool book. And I knew what was going on, but I, like, it was just so, okay, we're doing this, this, and this. Now we're doing this, which has nothing to do with what we just did. Okay, fine. I'll be in that headspace now. So that's coming out soon, which is actually sh I'm really looking forward to because it's so <laughs> wacky. Like it's 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 pretty cool. That's awesome. Uh, presents to play. Yeah. You gotta go out and get it. <laughs> I, I I've struggled with those. I maybe um, each time I do the duels, I keep on thinking like, couldn't you just let me do it? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing yeah let, yeah, yeah. could you just let me like if, i think if you all right cool we'll make this work um by the way susan was talking about your isabel starling uh, isabel starling yeah. stuff um which on uh, isabel starling we were very uh not luckily but uh, well i hope not luckily we were nominated for a solvas award were you um yeah isabel runs a publishing company called mm -hmm. decent fellows press and she <clears> bought <throat> the rights to an author called john wilcher's books called More Heat Than The Sun. It's like an eight, nine book series. And I've been narrating them for the whole year. And the first book is now in the thrillers section. We we entered the first book in and we we're, you know, was fucking delighted to see that it was nominated, which is great. Hell yeah, dude. That's fantastic. I'm very pleased. I didn't know that she'd bought a publishing company. I see her, she's very active she in a couple of a... different Facebook forums. I've seen that. I didn't yeah. know that she'd done that. That's awesome. It's yeah, it's her own publishing company. She's been Decent Fellows Press for a while, and uh, I think I don't know when it was, but it was a while back. She was like, you know what? 
I like some of these authors and they're not being treated correctly and I like their writing and I'm going to fix that. So she's helping a ton of authors out, including, including John Wilcher. Like she really did a great job reformatting the books and was very nice to pick me as the narrator. I was very much appreciated mm. because they're really cool books. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, well, she, she's been a huge fan of you for years. Obviously she picked you up early on. You, you, uh, yeah, years you, ago. Yeah. Those, uh, independent audiobook awards were, um, uh, I think that's where I'd first seen your name was because, uh, we were both oh, nominated yeah. in a couple of the same categories and, and you, you, you handily won those. Um, and it, which <laughs> you, what you deserved. I mean, they were fantastic. You did a great job. Oh, thank uh, you that's very much. also where I was first exposed to Isabel's name. And I, I it sounds like I say yeah. I'm, I'm getting a, a rash or something. I'm, it's, I'm not <laughs> suggesting this, Bell, but I was exposed to both of your names and it was fantastic. Um, let's hear the Wiltshire books are awesome. Uh, that's what Sue says. Yeah. Um, those are the, the Isabel Sterling Thank you, books. Sue. Is that correct? Yeah, very good. They're written by John Wiltshire and then uh, published by <clears throat> um, Decent Fellows. There you go. There you go. Um, I, I haven't run into many of those yet. I do work with a couple different smaller pubs, uh, Falstaff Books and a few others. He does like the Bub the Monster Hunter stuff that we work on. Um, oh, but nice. They, those are fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but it, he uh, actually, we, we just recently did one. Do you know James, uh, James Foster? Um, oh, yeah. Well, James. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I guess I don't know him personally. I took some coaching from him. So I guess I've met him a few times. He's a really good coach. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he did the Firefly stuff. Um, that he fucker did. Got to do, he got to do Firefly. But uh, I remember when he, when he posted that up and I was like, you know what, James, you deserve this and you're a great narrator, <laughs> but fuck you. That's yeah, Firefly. Exactly. I love Firefly. Exactly. And you're going to do a great job. <laughs> I would have Nancy Kerrigan his ass so fast to get that gig. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, uh, he, he does another, uh, uh, John G. Hardness is the author and John G. Hardness is kind of a big deal. He's, he's got his thing going on and he, uh, yeah. he, he writes a couple different of these urban fantasy series. One is Bubba the Monster Hunter. I voice that one. And James narrates and, and voices the Quincy Harker, um, Monster Hunter series for him. And, oh, um, I think I've heard of these. Yeah, they're really good. They're really John G. Hardness is the real deal. He's a fucking great urban fantasy mm. author. Um, my stuff with Bubba is described by Hardness and it's very accurate description. He's a writer, go figure. As a, um, it's a Larry the Cable Guy meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's Bubba very the nice. Monster Hunter. It's fucking <laughs> perfect. Um, but anyways, the reason I brought that up was because we just worked on something where, uh, um, they're doing a crossover in the, in the series. So James's characters are now, oh. it's like season five and they're crossing over into mine and mine are crossing over into his and all that fun shit. So it's kind of cool. Plus to get to say, That's you get, awesome. yeah, I got to work with the dude that did firefly. It's cool to say that, you know, it really is <clears throat> best. <Yeah. laughs> Melissa Gramley noticed my. My Nancy Kerrigan name drop there. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you doing any, uh, any work outside of the audiobook stuff right now? Um, uh, let me, I mean, no, because I, it doesn't come to mind. I do some voiceover stuff, but it's still in the booth, but it's not a, it's not audiobook related. It's just general voiceover. Yeah. I'm trying to think I should do something because I would like to do something outside of the booth. I got a nice camera to try and film like funnier videos or better videos. Yes. But I, I have no time to do it because I'm either too <laughs> tired or I'm working. I get and it. I need to, uh, I need to get some good ideas. Cause that'd be fun. I want someone else in the industry. I'm trying to talk Melissa Grambling into doing this and I don't know that she's going to, but she just started a Facebook group called, uh, uh, the rambling Gramlin, which is fucking hilarious because nice. Melissa Grambling just, she, uh, She's, she's our town, she's our, our town stalker and our town gossip all rolled up into one. She's a wonderful human being. I love her to death. Um, I keep on trying to talk her like, just do a podcast. Like, nope. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying, I'm trying to talk to anybody else into doing it. Do an industry related podcast. Just fucking do something. Um, the, yeah, talk to the cannot be the only fucking podcast out there in this industry. It just can't happen. <laughs> Somebody else has got to do something. So far, nobody's taken me up on it. I don't know. Like, would it be, would it be an audiobook podcast or just, cause these are fun because mm -hmm. you get to like just chat and have a good time. I don't know. There are some audiobook podcasts. I think Harper does one. Yep. Um, I think Audiophile does one. There's a, ah, oh, fuck. There's that, uh, speakeasy one. 
I forget his name. Oh yeah, yeah, Rich. Um, yeah, and that's very, very good. Um, uh, Rich does a fantastic job on that. That's actually how I I, I ran into James. I, I heard him on there, and I was like, motherfucker, I'd love to hire him as a coach, and I contacted him because of that show. But um, oh, there sweet. are audio, there are audiobook podcasts. Um, but I I don't like with mine. I ramble because that's what I do when I talk to people. It's this is just yeah. like if you'd be over my house. This is what we do. Um, but it, it, it's do do one that's you. It, it's it's obviously it's gonna be comedy yeah. related with you. Uh, you're a fucking hilarious dude. So I think yeah, I've had some ideas. One of them, it, they're always I get the ideas in the car because I get so mad at other drivers. Well, you know I'm gonna fucking do it. I'm gonna record myself and I'm gonna fucking get very mad at these drivers and then they're gonna they're gonna read it and listen to it and they're gonna be they're gonna feel bad. Which is, you know, not a great idea, but yeah, I could rant uh, on that subject for a while. I think. See, recorded from your car. Oh, that's right. You yeah. got a bike now. It's a little harder when you got the bike. That's it's just <laughs> fucking drivers. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> then they hit you. And then you're fucking done. Oh, I forgot to show you too. I got sound effects now. Um, oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah. We've got we've got the the easy Maybe ones. It was time for some coffee. And and you know, I totally the... understand that. If you don't want me being a cock tease. But I've got fun ones too. This one, this one right here, Gary. Every time I, I jump into Discord to work, this plays automatically whenever my my face comes up. Pay us. <laughs> it's fucking perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, VMix, baby, VMix. You can have sound effects too. It's fucking awesome. That is I'm awesome. You. I'm very proud of it. Um, <clears throat> so with the romance stuff, have you got anything on the horizon for that right now? Have you got any big deals cooking? Yeah, one just came out actually for, by Haley Turner, which I think was featured in the, the picture you posted up. It's um the last in her Soulbound series, like seven book series, and uh, Dude, that's every, just every, been wrapped up. Yeah, everybody's talking about that. That seems to be kind of a big deal. It's a fun, it's a really good series, like really well written. It's got gods, it's got vampires, it's got werewolves. Like it's just Hard got all say. the the good stuff, <laughs> all the good stuff in it. I, I had a great I, I time always... narrating that series. I always said werewolves because I'm a fucking hick. And that's what we said for years. Werewolves. And apparently it's werewolves. werewolves. Yeah. That's how werewolves. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, I mean, that's how fucking rednecks say it. We say werewolves, but apparently you're supposed werewolves. to say werewolves. Um, All I, right. I, I, I learned that. So I say werewolves. I like the way you just said it though. You said uh, werewolves. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You said it like you had a little cum in your throat. And I kind of like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like kind of Bob Ross on these wet yeah. werewolves. <laughs> There was that was one of the rough words for me. I was like, I forget what book I was doing, but I was ten chapters, twenty chapters, and I was deep into this fucking book. And Proofer sends back this, and Proofer was my wife too, so she wasn't nice about it. And she said, uh, "You're saying werewolves wrong." And this was like oh, a no. werewolf book, and that was kind of a big deal. So that was one of the ones that I had to go back yeah, and correct. I, I don't know if we we talked about it last time, but I I've had one of those where it's like, oh, you've said the main character's name wrong for the entire book. Uh, have a fun day fixing that, please. I just had one hmm. earlier today. Um, this book I'm working on is is uh, is set in Eastern Europe. I Very am nice. not set in Eastern Europe myself. <laughs> um, and apparently, I'm, I'm also a fucking redneck. That's where that's put me in a Western, and I shine. I can do that all day yeah. long. Um, and don't get, yeah, you know, I can do other shit too. But so, anyways, uh, a couple of the characters' names in this are Eastern European names, and they just don't make a okay. lick of fucking sense to me. So, the author sends over pronunciation. Thank you very much. That really helps me. And the author's awesome, but the author sent over pronunciation, saying it like I would say Bob or Joe, like just so quick going through. And there's a couple Europeans. Right. Well, you should, I mean, you're from, so you're not from Eastern, you're, but you're from, there's vowel sounds that happen there that don't happen here. There's. Yeah. You've got to like try form your face around them. And it's like, hold on. I've not made that sound before. Let me hold on. Yeah. And it's it's it makes, an ordeal. Yeah. It makes me want to punch them in the throat. That's what it does. <laughs> or, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to explain to them earlier that it's like, there's there used to be this commercial where there's this. Old man had a dollar bill and he had it on a fishing rod and he would hold it out. And he, he would basically, you, this, this young kid would reach for the dollar bill and the old man would pull the dollar bill away on the fishing rod and say, Bad. oh, you got to be quicker than that. You know, <laughs> that was the game. That's what it's like <clears throat> because I'm trying to get my money. <laughs> just, just yeah. let, me say your, let me say your words. I'll do it entertainingly. Just let me say your words. And then you give me the money and they're like, oh, no, 
I got this funny name. You're going to have to say 57,000 times. <laughs> exactly oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, God, it is the worst. Oh. When you, you get through a book and you're, you're like, I've definitely said that name right. I've definitely said it right. And then they describe how you pronounce it in the story itself. And you're like, no, said it wrong. Said it wrong for the entire <laughs> fucking book. And thank you for telling me in the second to last chapter how his name was pronounced. Mm-hmm. I, I really, I haven't I really come across it. I haven't come across it very often, but like, if I'm an author and I write a book and I say in the second to last chapter, he said in his strong French accent, (laughs) how has the reader benefited from that? They've not read that character in a strong French accent for the entire book. Why does that need to go in there? Or in book two? Yeah. (laughs) I have had, I have had it when book two was like his distinctly amazingly sexy Portuguese accent. And I'm like, I did not do that dude Portuguese in the first book. It was men- mentioned nowhere. <laughs> How was I supposed to know? We've, we've, we have these stories. I, I had a four book series where in the fourth book, the main character it turns out is Hispanic and has this whole Hispanic family come in. It's one of those, oh you know, God. where each, each book in a series gets a new uh, main character and love interest. Yeah, so. yeah. So it was this one, this character was around the entire time and he's been a prominent part of the stories, but he gets, he's the MC of the fourth one. And suddenly he's from a Hispanic family. <laughs> and to make matters worse, for some reason, I randomly, I randomly made him sound like he's kind of from Brooklyn or somewhere in there, you know, somewhere kind of that, oh, no. that Northeastern. Hard one do. Oh, I totally didn't. <laughs> so <laughs> his entire Hispanic family ended up sounding kind of something like that. <laughs> it was... <laughs> I uh, I had the author on Talk to the Beard, and I explained this to her, not before, but on air. <laughs> oh, no. that's, my, that's my style. Luckily, the author doesn't listen to audiobooks, so <laughs> it, was, it worked out perfectly. That is a strange one. I have some authors who did, it's just not their thing. It's They like want to get them done, but they don't listen to audiobooks. It's just not how they enjoy books. They'd rather uh, write but they yeah. have someone else listen to it on their behalf, which is was like, that's fair enough. At least you're checking it and giving it a bit of QC. Uh-huh. Which now, is cool. This one does, this one does exactly that. Her PA does it, um, which is fucking fantastic. That's awesome. Um, I, I've, do you have, do you run into this with your indie clients? I have a good mix of some clients will absolutely 100% listen to every word and send back corrections, whether you've had it proofed, edited, whatever, it could be fucking perfect. Oh, yeah. They're still going to get those others. Like, nothing and it's i i prefer the nothing oh, yeah. myself but it, it just <laughs> I'll, I'll take whatever it's cool but um they're like here's your here's you know here here's the book you give me back an audio book that's we don't have to make eye contact <laughs> right yeah yeah <laughs> i definitely run into that yeah like it's it, there are times when some authors are just very like, I'm going to go through it. I, like, and I always give them a fully proofed, fully edited audiobook. So essentially it is retail ready. Mm-hmm. And some of them are able to find stuff that my proofer mixed, missed. And uh, that upsets me when that happens. So it's like, God damn it. But I was done. <laughs> but I suppose it all. And then some are just like, oh, you, you've proofed it. Great. Let's send it on out. Let's mm-hmm. send it to retail. And like, there's, I've had no complaints either way. I mean, both, both work. I, I enjoy the, the one I, don't like I used to I used to set myself up for this because I was really trying so when I would uh, <clears throat> okay if you hire me to do your audiobook I'm going to give you my my pre notes I'm going to give you a sample voice for each character um, I'm going to give too. you my first 15 you do that so I did that for a long time I stopped doing that unless I'm oh, requested yeah. to do it I have no problem doing it but what I prefer my preferred workflow now is you give me your manuscript. If I have any questions, I'll ask. But you've hired me to be John Solo. Nobody else does John exactly, Solo. Yeah. That's that's me. So you hired that. You know what you're getting. Um, and you know what? If you didn't want that, you probably shouldn't hire John Solo. You probably should hire Gary Furlong um, or somebody like that that's not me. Um, that's what I prefer. Yeah. Now, I'll work otherwise, but I, I've done that for a long time, the sample voices and stuff. Um, yeah. And... What I ran into was uh, a bit more micromanagement a few times than I was comfortable with. Um, right. I really wanted this character to be Brad Pitt, um, you know, and this oh, yeah. character to be Sean Connery. And, you know, those were the kind of things. And I'm, I don't do impressions, so it didn't really work out that well for me. Um, those are the kind of notes I was getting back and forth. And then I would record five right. chapters with what they liked. And they'd be like, 
you know, you were right the first time. <laughs> it oh, was like, oh, no. You know? Yeah, those. Um, no, they got to be sure from the get go. It's like, <clears throat> we, we, we nailed this down. I'll do two and three back and forth with you if you want. But once I start recording, I, I can and will not change it because it's, I'm, I have to, I have to put on autoplay and just go until the book is yeah. done. Yeah. Because it's, oh man, you could, that's a difficult process to go through and fix a character that on a whim, the author was just like, nah, you know what? I think we're nearly there. It's like, I think we're the full fucking way there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very hard. <laughs> a lot of them don't understand. And it's not an author's fault. Uh, a lot of them just don't understand. No, not the, at all. The workflow is very different from a, narr a narrator's perspective. So, and when an author, yeah. if an author wants to change the, the way a character sounds, done. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, one word can take me twenty minutes to fix. <laughs> it's yeah. it's uh, <laughs> it takes it takes a bit longer. So it's not their fault. It's, a lot of them don't understand the the workflow process and the, the difficulties of it. Um, yeah, as well as it's yeah, on I, us then. I'm which, like I've made a point to be like, here's how it's going to go, and here's how it should go before we mm -hmm. record. Let's get <clears throat> everything ironed out, every single thing ironed out, because it's too hard to do it after. And yeah. I want you to be happy. I want you to love the audiobook. I really do. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been working, I try and work at the, the level that they want to work at. I prefer yeah. not to work at the, the, I'm going to give you samples of, of everything level. If, if I will, um, but it's not my favorite thing anymore. Yeah. I guess the, the freedom of being able to give my interpretation of, see, it sounds when I say things like this, I hear what I sound like in my head and I hear like, that dude's a pompous prick. <laughs> I ain't gonna hear no. that. Um, <laughs> I hear how it sounds, and it's really not that way. It's just, um, it, it's just a, a, a matter of. I've found that other people's, I people give me words to say, and they don't sound as good um, when I try and do them not being me. You know, yeah. <laughs> when, when I'm not so. I find that my interpretation, like if you want to hire me for me, excellent, awesome, it works out like a charm. Um, yeah. I'm going to back out of this one. Slowly. Be, yeah. Like, you know, we, we like, like you said, like they, 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 but they've hired you. So they've heard your body of work. And like, I like that guy. I want that guy to do his thing on my book. And that's, you know, there are different ways. Like I'm, I'm the same. It's like, if you want someone else, that's, that's great. But like, d don't hire me then. That's and so it, it's yeah. good that you should be allowed to do your thing. If, and they, they'll, they'll see the quality of the stuff you've done and be like, you know what? I'm in good hands here. I'll let them take, take this work and go ahead. Well, with yeah. That. And it's because I can't compete with you. I, I just can't. No, you do something. It, it very much is. I cannot do Gary for long. I mean, maybe if you bought me some flowers or something, but <laughs> I mean, I, I can't. The correct you, amount of lube. You, you have something going on that, that me nor really any other narrator out there does. Um, You've got this Irish, Scottish fucking, I mean, you're a goddamn European mutt going on over there. You got a lot of, <laughs> you got a lot of shit that I don't even understand. Um, <clears throat> but the fact is I can't do that just as you can't be John Solo. We kind of have these exactly, two different things yeah. going on. So, and I think both of us have enough of a body and I'm not going to speak for you, but I think I've, I've got enough of a body of work out there at this point where people kind of know what they're getting. Um, yeah, they 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 know what I sound like. They kind of know what I'm capable of. So they're gonna hire that, or they're not. If they need like like Isabel stuff, she needed some you know some European muttery going on there. So that's yeah. that's a Gary Furlong territory. That's um, honestly, I wish you would have been working this project I'm working right now. You'd have been fantastic at it. You didn't. I got it. But, but <laughs> you, you know, we all do our own thing. And once you, once you get past oh, yeah, a certain definitely. level, yeah, I mean, you, you become your own, your own, you kind of develop your sound, I guess is what I'm, oh, ACDC yeah. can't be the Beatles, you know? Right, right. You know, I completely agree. Cause it's like, if even, even narrators with similar skill sets, it doesn't matter if, if they want x voice or y voice it doesn't matter if x and y are similar if they like there's something about x they want or something about y they want then that's what they want and mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter we can all read we can all hopefully tell a good story but then there's like the little extra things that they want that maybe that you can do that i can't and they'll be well that's why i'm going to pick john instead of gary mm -hmm. this, this nice. is a fantastic it's a fantastic conversation um by the way um yeah. well and not a lot of people are comfortable talking about things like this um and it, it's awesome i mean you've been around for a while and you've done enough books at this point you're not going to be short on work anytime soon um so i don't i don't I think that you not. have to uh... no i mean i i would imagine that you're probably booked out several months in advance and i'd imagine that it's probably not a problem getting more um 
it's you, you've been around for a while. Um, yeah. So it, that being said, now you know your level where you can comfortably, like, a, a lot of people are worried about. Uh, well, for one, pissing off other narrators in a community, which, yeah, no, okay. uh, and also <laughs> you know not not getting work uh, because of of saying things like that. Um, I don't think it's a concern for you, and it's not a concern for me at this point. I'm not that I'm ever. I mean, I, I could always use more work. <laughs> don't get me oh, wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, um, but but you know, it's it's uh, people are. Once you, until I got to the point where I could comfortably just be myself in the booth and do my thing with my style, yeah, I was always concerned about somebody else saying, you did really good. Or, you know, I want you to do that differently, that sort of thing. Now, right. I kind of I kind of do my thing and it works a lot better. I don't know if I'm making any sense there. No, I, th- I, think, I think I get what you're saying. It's like... I don't think it'd piss off other narratives. Well. It's like, it is that whole fear of like to be, to actually say to an author, like I said to an author a, a while back, they wanted me to do, and I ended up working with them, but I was like, look, the accent you want me to do is the, is by far my weakest. And you're from that country. So you're going to, I'm going to send you my samples. I'm going to do my best, but right up front, it might be better for you to hire someone or at least audition someone who is from the place you're from. Like, I think that might be the best choice, but I'm going to audition for you anyway. We'll see what you think. And we did a few back and forths and she ended up liking what I did, but it was like, I don't know. I think you have to, there are going to be people out there who can do a thing better than you can do it. And it's not the end of the world for you to say like, I'm going to pass on this project because I don't think I do a great job or I'm not particularly super interested in it. And therefore I'm not going to do a great job, but there are other people who are, who are very good and can do it. So it's a brilliant, know. it's a brilliant way to put it, dude. Thank you for putting my words. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for putting something in my mouth, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that's a, a, well, I, I have started doing something in the last couple of years. Imagine this, how brilliant this is. When a, somebody approaches me to do their book, um, once you work out a couple of the, you know, um, you know, kind of, can, can you afford blah, 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 whatever. At that point, yeah, uh, but... Yeah, the technical shit. Well, I ask him to then send me their book so I can look at it first. Imagine that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't used to do that. I was just like, you want to hire me? You like me and you can afford me? Fuck yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, that was where I was at for a lot of years. So they send me their book and I sometimes it takes me two days. Sometimes it takes me two months, but I will I will get to look at that yeah. manuscript and I will, I will look it over and I will see if I'm appropriate. But another narrator... Uh, the the fantastic Greg Tremblay told me once, um, be a problem Beast. solver. Yeah. yeah, he's fucking amazing. Yeah, um, he 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 said be a problem solver. If you look at the manuscript and it's not for you, let's say you look at the manuscript and you fucking hate it. Fine, great. Not everybody does. Not everybody's going to hate that manuscript. <clears throat> Trying yeah. to point him in the direction of somebody that might do a good job with it. Yeah, and it was such good advice. So. I, I do that a lot. When I see something that might not be up my alley, or maybe I just can't hit can't hit the deadline or whatever, I try and kind of uh, you spread the. I spread my love all over the community. Gary, spread your say. seed. There's a there's not a condom in the world that can contain my <laughs> my. <laughs> your your love spreading. <laughs> it's gonna happen. You might as well just give in. It's it's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Um, dude, we've, uh, we've done 40 minutes. Um, oh, it, sweet. It, yeah. Then you were great, man. I really appreciate this. Um, this has been a lot of and, fun. Well, thanks for being my, my kind of, I've done a couple of these with VMix, but this is the first one with all the effects and the fucking intro and all yeah, this. Yeah, it's Thank working you. out. I think so. Um, I really should have gotten your logo beforehand, which you have provided to me in advance of the last show. And I didn't get ready for this one because I suck. Yeah. I have a cool looking little Gary Furlong, uh, it's cartoon like looking thing. Astronaut. Thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's very cool. I I could have easily had that ready, and I we're supposed to be it would it would be uh, to your I uh, it'd be at the top of the screen basically is where it's supposed to be in this whole setup, but but I didn't get it ready because I'm a fucking idiot. <clears throat> Hold on. Look at that. Look at that. Just, just have look at that. Everybody, look at that. Like it'll be yeah. like yeah, and you can animate it too because I play plan on uh, animating these things, so you can shake it. I guess you can. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shake it, shake it for. I would just fly yeah. across the screen. <laughs> exactly. So the uh, the final thing that's going to happen here is uh, there's going to be an outro video play. So um, okay, as always, if, I I may have actually missed less comments this time than I normally do because they're actually up on the fucking screen. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. 
I like it. But uh, jump in and uh, and you know afterwards the next couple of days and look over and see anything I missed. If you could respond and uh, wave to the camera, say bye, and uh, I will see you fucks on Friday. Have fun. Bye.